a lot of people have uh, a lot of misnomers about Union State. It, it's a controversial um, uh, topic that you know people don't really want to address. Um, and especially now, I think it's very important, especially now that we're seeing a lot of strikes happening across the country with uh, with Amazon, with the Pittsburgh sanitation uh, folks, the uh, Whole Foods. Uh, I think McDonald's just went on strike. We're, we're going to see these essential workers uh, go on strike. And here's the deal, right? We are all essential. Like CEOs, not so essential. CFOs, not so essential, right? Libraries are essential. Grocery stores are essential, right? Educators are essential. Art is essential. CFOs are not essential. <laughs> it's just how it works. Um, if you if you are a CEO, pay your employees better and your taxes. Pay those too. Those are fun because uh, because we all got to do them and and we don't we don't know where your tax havens are. You know we we haven't we haven't looked into the eyes of the devil to find. What particular spot in Delaware? That's right, Delaware is a tax haven. Uh, so it's important to talk about unions because unions uh, help the worker out. That's what they do. That's what their primary purpose is. Uh, before unions, uh, let's talk about pre-union days, right? But way back in in the uh, eighteen early eighteen hundreds, you, you had people working twelve hour days. You had people working seven days a week. You had dangerous work conditions with no protections at all. You had a lot of child labor, like kids were working in these places, and you had low pay. A lot of people just weren't uh, paid very well, right? Uh, and then you had uh, you, you had things like the Central Labor Union rise up um, in the early 1900s, um, and they fought to improve conditions and compensations for the worker. And I've been saying this all week, and I feel like I have to keep iterating this until all uh, 8 billion human beings on this planet understand this, which is why it's imperative to, to, to share all this shit. <laughs> uh, but labor unions are fighting for basic human rights. That's what they're doing, right? When people go on strike, it's basically they're, they're, they're basically saying, hey, uh, this company is not granting basic human rights, and that's what we're fighting for. And every time we we are asking for basic human rights, uh, they keep shutting us down. They keep telling us that we're that, that we're not worth it. Uh, and then uh, and then and then they don't grant that. So we have to go on strike. And that's what we're going to fight for. So that's it. And that's basically what we're doing. Right. So anybody that comes out and says that they don't want to stand by these labor unions, they don't want to stand by these strikers, that these strikers are lazy and they're terrible and they're evil and they're awful. It, they're they're just basically saying I don't fucking care about basic human rights. I don't give a shit about good working conditions or fair compensation. You know I care about the CEO. They are essential. Okay, but with without these CEOs shackling us to these workstations, we would all just just be masturbating into the wind. Is that what you want? A bunch of wind masturbators? You you six lazy strikers. That's essentially the direction that they're going, right? So, with these, with this history of strikes that we that we see um, throughout the 1800s, throughout the 19, early, especially the early 1900s, we got the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938, which advocated and put into law an eight-hour work week, overtime pay. It outlawed um, uh, kids under 14 working. Uh, we we got we got weekends. Uh, th th you know, we got weekends because of this thing. We got today, like today off, you know, today's part of the weekend. It's a Sunday. Uh, that, that, uh, when, when this video is being live streamed, it's a Sunday. Uh, you know, that's, that's a big deal. We wouldn't have this, you know, and we need it Sundays, uh, because that was a day, uh, that's the only day, as we all know, it's the only day, uh, where Jesus is allowed to talk. That's, uh, that's that's sort of the trade off that happened, um, you know. He got to come back uh, after a three day uh, three day break, and he bargained. He collectively bargained with the Lord uh, to come back for for after three days. Um, and then uh, the the trade off was that uh, the only day that he could talk to the flock was particularly on Sundays. So you know that's why you got to go to church on Sundays. That's what, none of the other days matter. They don't count. So if you go to church on Wednesday. Uh, it, it doesn't really count. 
it's it's uh it's fucking Sunday. It's the today's the day that matters. That's the day that matters. So uh, we got the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938, um, and you know we got eight-hour workday, overtime pay, outlawed kids under 14, uh, weekends. We got all these fair labor as as the name of the act itself suggests. We got fair labor standards, things that we were fighting for. We we got them because we striked, because we organized, because we supported unions, um, and now essentially we're at a point where we need to we we need to go back to doing that again. We need to go back to supporting unions. We need to go back to striking. We need to go back to organizing um as the collective working class because all of these laws, all of these standards that were set back in 1938 uh are being circumvented. Are being uh the, you know the, these corporations, these CEOs are spitting in the face of the people that 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 came up with this fair Labor Standards Act of 1938. And how are they doing that? We're circumventing these laws with our current conditions by, uh, by people have to have two to three jobs now. There are people that have two to three different jobs. Uh, this circumvents the 40 hour work week because now with these two to three jobs, a lot of people are working well over 40 hours a week. I know I do. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm self employed, but in order to get all the stuff that I need to get done, uh, you know, I do end up sitting at my computer at my desk for, for, you know, 12 hours a day. That's just, that's just sort of the, the nature of the game. Um, unfortunately, and that is a choice that I make when I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in, in terms of myself, but I also know there, uh, there's a bunch of my friends out there that work two, three different jobs. And on top of that are content creators, right. That, that put out YouTube videos that, that go do stand up comedy that perform, uh, music and poetry and spoken work. They work two to three jobs. That That's, that's 60 plus hours a week minimum that's 60 plus hours a week. Right. And, and some of them don't have weekends because, you know, they work on the weekends as, as performing artists, if if that's what they do, or they work as weekends because they're part of the service industry. Uh, and that's what they do, you know, uh, or, or they're security guards or whatever it is, but they're working on, they're working weekends. So there goes the idea of the weekend, right? Their second or third job, um, is, is, is on a weekend, uh, and then there's no overtime pay because even though you're working past 40 hours, you're working past 40 hours at a different job. You're part time at two, three different jobs, which means that you don't get benefits anyway. Right. Like that's how that's another way that these companies circumvent that part time part time employees are not protected by any of these laws. They they don't have any benefits. And the only benefits there are are to the fucking CEOs and the corporations. That's who gets the benefit at the end of the day. We've lost our weekends. Which means that, you know, it's like we're not working for the weekend anymore. What we are working for is for a CEO, Robert Barron, to get richer and richer and make far more money for himself or herself. Greed, greed doesn't see genders, okay? Ladies can be greedy too, okay? Non-binary folks can be greedy too, all right? Greed, greed, greed transcends all identities. So it's important. Okay, so let's let's talk about what a labor union actually is, right? Because not a lot of people really know what a labor union is. Uh, labor unions are a collection of workers that unite to make decisions about the conditions that affect their jobs. Um, and these decisions that they make are called collective bargaining, uh, which is a negotiation between an employer and a labor union to talk about the improvements of the conditions that they need, right? And basically, the labor unions or trade unions, whatever you want to call them, uh, bring the worker to the negotiating table, because right now uh, that is not the case, right? Uh, we are not represented at the negotiating table when decisions are made, uh, either on a uh, on a company level, on a corporate level, or on a legislative level. Um, they we're just we're just not there. We're just not taken into account. We, we are not thought about when this sort of stuff happens, right? Uh, for example, the most recent one is the stimulus bill that just went out. Were we present? <laughs> I don't know. No one consulted me. Did anyone consult you guys out there? Uh, I doubt it, right? Like, we, and, and no one that represents us, no one that represents our interests was really pr- particularly present at these negotiations. All, the, all these negotiations happened behind closed doors, you know, in some fucking smoke-filled room, you know, where, where a bunch of these rich assholes were sitting there. Like, that's why they came out and they were like, we're going to have a $4.3 trillion corporate slush fund and we're going to allocate $500 billion to give to whatever fucking lobbyist 
uh, you know, tickles my balls first. Like that's essentially how, uh, you know, they made that decision. They're like, oh, but we'll give you guys 1200 bucks. You guys good? You guys happy with that? Okay, we don't know how long the situation is going to last because we're not really going to make a plan for it. Um, we're we're going to kind of uh, sit around and uh, and count our money, and that's going to take a long time. That's going to take. I mean, w- what we did is we converted all of our cash um, into one dollar bills, and we're not going to count it. What we're going to do is we're going to watch uh, one of you count it, and for every um, hundred million that we get. We're going to give you $1 and you're welcome. Trickle down economics, people. Trickle down economics, right? So basically, that's what the unions put us into that room to go, hey, (laughs) maybe you don't give $4.3 trillion to, to corporations that don't fucking need it and have no record of ever trickling that down to the employee trickling that down to the working class. That's never been a fucking thing that's happened in like the 300 years of history that this country has like ever. (laughs) So basically the unions put out this collective bargaining agreement and this collective bargaining agreement is a contract between the employer and the employee that, uh, that, uh, that is agreed upon that benefits all employees, whether you're part of the union or not, all of the workers get the benefit that is agreed upon. Everybody gets it. And none of these, no, and there can't be any changes or anything to these agreements unless we go back and, uh, and, and the union is, is back at the negotiating table on behalf of the working class. Um, and so one of the controversial things dealing with unions in this regard are dues because unions do have dues. Um, you, you do have to pay union dues. Uh, and, and I believe one of the statistics that I read, uh, was that it's one to 1.5% of your paycheck, uh, is, is what goes into union dues if you choose to join, um, a union, but, uh, regardless of that, you're still protected, right? That's their obligation. Um, and dues, uh, what they do is they help cover the cost of collective bargaining, uh, which is lawyers. Right. That's <laughs> that's what you need to pay for, because these corporations can afford all these lawyers and all these lawyers, uh, all these corporate lawyers do is look for little loopholes. It's all they're looking for. They're looking for little loopy loopholes, you know, to, to kind of like sneak in between to, to fuck over the worker to be like, aha, but this law does it because of the way this comma is positioned and the semicolon. Uh, it means that uh, that the, the CEO uh, gets to take 80 uh, percent of the money that you make uh, for, uh, for, for lavish funds. And that's uh, because that's that semicolon. That's what that semicolon represents. So, so they have to basically find lawyers uh, that can circumvent that. So collective bargaining, uh, grievance and services, which is uh, more lawyers, uh, and then political funds for supporting particular pro-union candidates, right? Um, and this is sort of one of the ones that does get a little controversial in the sense that uh, should these unions uh, be supporting uh, political candidates. And my counter to that is should corporations uh, support political candidates too, right? Because that's another thing that we see is, is a bunch of corporate lobbyists. We see a bunch of corporations supporting political candidates and we see a bunch of can- political uh, people people in the, in the Senate and the House of Representatives uh, in uh, higher offices than that uh, basically support corporations that end up making them richer once they get out of office. So, you know, you have corporate lobbyists, you have the lobbying machine itself. Uh, so the people that are like, hey, unions are, are are supporting candidates that are saying that unions are pretty cool. I mean, aren't corporations essentially doing the same thing? So shouldn't we talk about just not having money in politics? Is, isn't that like a bigger fucking subject to, ha- <laughs> to be talking about? Why are people getting pissed off at unions basically putting their support behind a candidate that talks about how unions are cool? Now, the dues in in and of themselves um, in 2018 on average is an average. So that means this that there there are some above this number, some below this number. Uh, right. So it's four hundred dollars a year or sixteen dollars a month, something along those lines is sort of 
um, what it what it averaged out to, right? Uh, so uh, four hundred dollars a year, sixteen dollars a month, and the reason why the number is is what it is is because you're not just giving to if you're part of a union, you're not just giving to a local union, but you might be giving to a national union as well. Uh, so that brings up the question, if there are local chapters that you have to support, as well as a national chapter that the local chapter is under, um, what about just creating one big union? Uh, that was actually, that was the talk uh, in, in 1919, um, w- when I talked about the 1919 Winnipeg General Strike, which is a video that you can go check out on my pages uh, that I talked about earlier this week. I talked about it on Friday. If uh, if th- those of you that are in the stream watch that video on Friday, they were talking about having one big union that collectively recognized every single person. And the idea would be that maybe we bump the number up a little bit. Right. So so if union dues are one to one and a half percent of your paycheck, maybe we bump that up to three to five percent of your paycheck and we give it to this one big union that collectively, you know, um, is is spending money for for collective bargaining for all workers, not just specific, you know, it's not just oh retail workers or teachers or so on and so forth, right? Uh, so that's an idea that 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 possibly could work. Uh, that that possibly could be something. Um, and if po- if po- political funds are really a problem. What if the labor unions themselves were a political party, <laughs> right? Like labor is a political party in the UK. Uh, what if we had a working class party? Um, and I know there are some people uh, out there that are trying to um, trying to make that work, trying to figure out how to make that work, right? But what if what if there was a political party that's surrounded specifically around uh, around unions and, and what unions stand for and the, uh, and the philosophies of the working class people. What if that was something that we did? Right. And, and th- again, that would be people funding into that. Um, and at that point, you know, the, the dues, if, if it was a political party, you can't take dues out of somebody's, uh, somebody's paycheck, obviously, but you could make a monthly contribution or, you know, whatever, um, just, just like you su- support every month, a, a person that you find interesting or whatever, right? Like, just like I have some patrons that, uh, support me on a monthly basis, just like Jimmy Dore has that. My buddy Ron Placone has that, right? Like, uh, Eleanor Goldfield has that, um, it would kind of be the same thing is, is if you want somebody, um, as a political party represents the interests of the worker that would bring you to the negotiating table, um, in, uh, in terms of, um, uh, in terms of collective bargaining. And, and I think that would dynamically also change the structure of the way that the Congress would be run too, because then you would have, you would have your Democrats, your, your Republicans, your progressive, and then the worker party and each, and then you, you divide up the house so that, you know, it's like, okay, let's say hundred people are in, in the Senate, right? You would have 25 people that represented Democrats, 25 people that represented uh, Republicans, 25 people that represented the worker, 25% that represented progressive ideals. And then that way, now you have an even amount of more of this political representation. So, so now we got, we got these ideas that are kind of, that, that are changing the dynamic structure uh, of, of the way that, uh, that policy is run, the way that you would negotiate in, in regards to these political ideologies, rather than it being that the union is taking money out of somebody's paycheck um, and, uh, and giving it to a political candidacy because a lot of this shit is like, oh, well, you know, but most of these unions, they support the Democrats. No one's, t- no one's, uh, supporting, uh, you know, Republicans. And, and, uh, you know, my, uh, comment to that, uh, would be maybe, uh, Republicans, uh, should suck less. Or, I mean, the Democrats need to suck less too, because they, they also suck and, uh, my belief is is that we need a, a a third party that does represent the worker, which is why I thought of this idea in the first place. <laughs> now, part of this problem too, part of the problem with dues, when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, unions, is that sometimes you got to pay the dues whether you're part of a union or not. Right. That's that's sort of um, uh, 
that's sort of that's sort of the thing with certain companies that are represented by a union. And the reason for that is because regardless of whether you belong to a union or not, uh, they will go to bat for you because they go to bat for all workers, all of them, every single one. We talked about that earlier, right? That's kind of what that collective bargaining is. Regardless of whether you're part of the union or not, you get the benefits of it. So to me, it sound, it's, it's more or less like if these guys are, if these guys are trying to benefit you, if these guys are actually hearing out what your needs are and then going to bat for those needs, why wouldn't you support them financially? Right. And then, and then there's all this notion of, of, of like, oh, well, you know, these intrinsically philosophically good things shouldn't be involved with money. It should, it should only be the crony corrupt people. That's, that's who need to be involved with the money. Don't, don't bring in these, uh, these nicey nice people. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. So you don't want these nicey nice people to like eat and be alive. <laughs> Is, is that what the argument is? I get shit for that too. It's like I talk about these ideas, I talk about this stuff, and I talk about you know being compassionate and good to each other and bringing us all together and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then people will get mad at me and they're like, "Oh, you have a Patreon, or or you're trying to take donations, or or you charge a cover for your shows." And it's like, yes, because one of the things I like to do uh, is eat a, a, and drink to to sustain myself and be alive, so I can continue to bring, uh, you know, levity to, uh, difficult topics. Uh, is that not, you don't want me to be alive? Um, <laughs> and it's, but it's, it's, it's such a, it's such a bizarre ideology though, to me is like, you can't have a financial, you, you can't, you can't back something up financially, um, that is specifically has some sort of altruistic need. Uh, so, you know, and, and this is the thing is like the right wing uses this uh, as an effort to chastise unions that are, once again, I to reiterate the point, fighting for your basic human rights as a worker. That's what they're fighting for. If you want somebody that is championing for the for the basic human rights of you as a worker, then that's what the unions are doing. And and the right chastises them because they're like, oh, but they want the money. And, and sometimes even if you don't want to be a part of their club and even though they're going to fight for you, whether you are or aren't, they're going to they're going to take some money from you. They're fucking going to take. How dare they? That is disgusting. That is disgusting. OK, and it's, it's not disgusting when a CEO does it by uh, by stagnating wages <laughs> and not paying their employees and using part time uh, part time employees to not give them benefits to the. You know, they don't have to pay for their health care so that they make more money. It's it's I think it's like 400 percent more is what a CEO makes than like the average working person. 400 percent more. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, and this is where right to work comes in. Right. That's our uh, second topic of conversation. Right to work. Um Basically, this gar- this this is a um, a rule that's put into place primarily by the conservatives, primarily by Republicans, uh, that guarantees that a person d- is not compelled to join a union or um, contribute to them financially in any way. So you know the, the these companies where it, they are union represented or they do partner with the union, and regardless of what happens, you know maybe a half a percent of your paycheck every month or every paycheck goes to a union, um, right to work states uh, basically make that not happen, which uh, which depowers the union by defunding them. Um, you know, because they, they're not getting any sort of corporate incentive. They're not, they're not backed by a government or anything. Um, they are, they are f- completely fueled by people that want to join the union that uh, by, by membership, by dues and all that sort of stuff. So that's how they can, uh, afford to be part of the collective bargaining aspect of things, right? And and what these right to work laws do is they allow the employer to essentially um, make rules that they want to make without consulting the employee. There's no democratization in the workplace. It's it's like these are the rules. This is what we are deciding to do, uh, and that's how it is. And if you don't like it, you can fuck right off is sort of the way that these guys go about doing it. So they get to stagnate wages. They get to hire and fire people for whatever reasons they want to. They want they can 
you know, move their business to a different country, completely laying off hundreds of thousands of workers without any say or anything. So it really, it really takes the democracy out of the workplace. Um, that's what these right to work laws really do. And, and in order to, uh, in order to maintain, in order to make sure that there are not people that are encouraged to, um, to join unions, a lot of companies will, uh, will use propaganda videos, uh, to, uh, um, to make sure that people don't join unions, to to you know uh, to to discourage people from joining unions, and and they keep saying like, oh, but this is a, this is for your best interest because the corporation has the best interest. The employer, the CEO, the CEO that's never come to visit you, that's never seen, uh, that's never that's never seen the floor, that's never even met you ever in your life, that doesn't know your life, your strife, or any of these sort of things. The person that's the most out of touch cares about you and will do things for you by lining their pockets, right? Like that's how it, and, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit, uh, a little bit later, later, but essentially what they're doing, um, with these right to work laws is, uh, is, uh, controlling the means of your labor. That's what they're doing. They're controlling the means of your labor. They get to, they get to seize the, the, the means of production. Um, is essentially how that works, right? And and where this happens, uh, where these right to work laws are present, it's a lot of states in the South, and it's a lot of states in the middle of the country. Basically, uh, it's all of the states that I tour pretty regularly. <laughs> like all the states that I go visit uh, uh, when, oh boy, guys, do you guys remember when touring was a thing? Uh, let's fondly remember touring for a second. Uh <laughs> Um, but that's primarily where I tour. Uh, and a lot of people make fun of me for going down South, going into the Midwest, you know, two or three times a year. Uh, and, and these are the states that I tour. So I, I, my tours where I talk about ideas like this, uh, about, about these socialist ideas or whatever, um, those are the right to work states. <laughs> Which is, which I kind of feel like is cool. Like I kind of I kind of think like that's like a that that's 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 like a fun way to bring the the resistance into it, um, because uh, you, you know it's just like me going in to be like, hey, do you believe in right to work? Well, here's why that's a big load of crap, uh, and you shouldn't unions. <laughs> Maybe I'll wake some people up. You know, that's the goal, right? Is to just fucking wake some people up. Here here's the deal. Here's the deal. Uh, unions have a duty to protect every single worker, whether they're members or not. Can you say that about a corporation? Based on everything we know about corporations, can you really say that 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 a corporation is uh, is willing to represent you for who you are, regardless of whether you believe in that corporation or not, whether you want to work? You can't, right? Like. Like Starbucks doesn't go out there and try to represent all coffee workers and be like, this is how we should treat all coffee employees, right? They don't, they just don't do that sort of stuff. Unions do. Unions, unions are out there fighting for the working class, whether, whether you're part of a union or not. You know, these strikers uh, are out there fighting for the, the benefit of all workers, whether you're a Whole Foods employee or not. It doesn't matter. They're fighting. They're fighting on the behalf of, of the collective working class, um, and this is the issue, right? It, it, it lies in the fact um, that unions usually support left wing candidates. They usually support liberal candidates. The right wing doesn't like this and has created the right to work laws. Uh, but you know, and and they're trying to defund the unions. They're trying to strip the union of of, of any power that it might have to democratize the workplace to bring. Um, the working class um, in, in, into the negotiating table. But here's the thing. If we can all agree that what unions and these strikes are really fighting for are basic human rights in the workplace, for you to be treated properly, to, to have um, a safe working conditions, to be paid and compensated a fair amount so that you can you can live your life and take care of your family, 
uh, it, it to 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 you know work uh, to have weekends so you can have some time to rest so you can have some time to rest in your evening so you have some freedom with your life to if to pursue other things to pursue family to pursue your passions to pursue all these other things these are basic human rights this is neither a left wing nor a right wing issue it is a matter of human rights and that's all it is right so this is not a political idea to me. Um, this is not something that's politicizing anything. Uh, people that like to say that like to ignore the values of of of, of basic human rights, uh, you know, because they're like, don't talk about it because it's over politicization, and we don't want to overly politicize uh, any of this stuff. Uh, you know, it's 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 different. It's a different thing. It's a, yeah. It's a, it, we have to talk about it, not because it's too political or anything, because it's ba about basic human rights. We should be talking about this. And some people blame um, business failure on unions as well, right? That's something that I that I saw from the other side. Um, the uh, the opposition like to bring up um, business failure that when people join unions, that it leads to the death of the business. It leads to the death of the markets. The markets, uh, oh, the markets will 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 tank. Well, yeah, because the markets are d directly connected to to how well rich people are doing. It's not connected to to how well you know the the average middle class is doing. It's not d d related to um, how how well you know um, you and I are doing. It's just not. It's connected to how well rich people are doing. And if collective bargaining and the unions sit and bring us to the to negotiating table and go, hey, uh, we don't feel very particularly represented by when you're slashing our wages, you're slashing our work conditions, you're forcing us into poverty, you're creating this insane wealth gap, and we don't, we're not going to fucking stand for that shit anymore. And it makes, you know, Jeff Bezos, who makes $165 billion a year, uh, it, it, and it brings his 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 value down to to one hundred and twenty billion dollars a year, just so that the rest of his employees can actually like live a decent life. Holy shit! Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? You still have one hundred and twenty billion dollars, you megalomaniacal psychopath. Oh, I really don't like that guy. I don't know if you can tell, you guys. But if the business does fail then why are we blaming unions? We should be blaming the way that the business is practicing. If everything hinges on, on the fact that a CEO or, or you know, the, the top dog makes a majority of the wealth, then I don't know if that, like, if, if your business doesn't care about its employees, then why would anybody work for that business? That's a problem within your business practices and your business philosophies. That's not the union's fault. The unions basically came and said, hey, you should, if you're going to practice this business, you should practice it uh, ethically by, by, you know, uh, offering uh, decent wages and so on and so forth to, to the, the people that work, um, work within your company. You should treat your employees that, that are, that are as important as you, as essential as you to this company, to the worth of this company, they should be treated equally. Um, so, so again, it's not about hierarchy at all in, in regards uh, to all this to me. It's, it's about, it's, it's about importance and purpose and what your, uh, position in this company is because all of us serve a purpose. Um, so, uh, a lot of corporations don't like this, right? Don't like unions. They don't like people unionizing. Amazon is one of them. Um, Amazon, as well as a ton of other corporations are for right to work and what they've done is uh and like a lot of companies do this walmart does this whole foods does this a lot of companies will have training videos that they will show people where um they will talk about unions and how unionization is a bad thing that that if you see somebody unionizing you should you should tell a floor supervisor you should get the word out you should disband any sort of meetings that involve you know, uh, talking about a union or anything of that sort, right? Um, and the way they frame it is the video that I watched uh, about Amazon, particularly, uh, it said that unions are bad for customers, employees, and their profits. Well, no shit, your profits. That's really what you care about. But it's nice that you threw the customers in on top of that, right? It's like, oh my God, can you guys imagine if we had to slow down production and actually like treat human beings like human beings. Could you imagine getting your package in maybe 
seven to 10 days. Oh, do you guys remember when that would happen? Seven to 10 days to get your packages. Holy shit. Some people killed themselves because they weren't able to get their uh, Bluetooth headphones. It, that Their blood is on the union's hands. Okay. It does not fit the model of Amazon and it's one day sh- it, it, shipping. Okay. And we're, we're trying to make that better for our customers and our employees like it. Our employees like working that much. They like, they like pumping things out. They like being on the brink of total exhaustion and near death at every shift possible. That's what they want. That's what they, at least that's what we tell them they want, which means that's what they want, which means that's what they want. One of the things in the Amazon video itself say, uh, said that um, uh, people to to bust union to talks uh, should they should act as spies, uh, and they're like, but don't be spies though. Just like tell us if you hear about it. So right in in 2019, um, so in 2019 we saw a shit ton of strikes, right? And and uh, Amazon there there was a lot of walkouts, a lot of strikes involving Amazon, and. Um, Three unions that have been talking to Amazon workers to help them unionize uh, are the Teamsters, the R- RWDSU, and the UFCW. I think those are both like retail, um, retail or manufacturing uh, uh, unions there. And Bezos, this is a quote from Bezos from one of the videos I watched. Uh, we don't believe we need unions to be the intermediary between us and the employee, but it's their choice. Right. It's the, oh, but it's the employee's choice is how he puts it. Oh, the employee, they can join a union if they want. We're, we're not, I mean, I'm a benevolent God King. I'm, I'm a benevolent megalomaniac, you know? If they want to, they totally can. Oh my God. It's not like a big deal. It's not like I'm going to fire them. And that's exactly what they do. If you unionize or if you organize a strike, you get fired. And we saw that. We saw that earlier in the week when when there was the Amazon walkout <laughs> just one week ago. Chris Smalls, the the the, the gentleman uh, that uh, uh, organized the walkout, um, got fired. And uh, there's another guy, Rashad Long, in 2018. He organized um, uh, a strike as well against Amazon, and he got fired. And they always get fired for these like bogus safety claims, right? That's what Chris Malls got fired for. They were like, oh, but he wasn't taking enough precautions uh, for, um, you know, this, this COVID that we're seeing. Okay. He wasn't, he wasn't taking the precautions uh, and we felt very unsafe uh, by keeping him in the building. Okay. And literally the reason why the strike happened is because somebody in Amazon got diagnosed. Somebody in Amazon got diagnosed and they sent that person home, okay, and then they didn't do anything else. They didn't sanitize the place. They didn't shut it down for a week. They, didn't, they weren't like, hey, we're going uh, to pay for everybody in the factory to get tested so, you can, so we can see if this, thing, um, if this thing spread or not, right? They didn't do any of that stuff. They were just like, keep working. And in fact, Chris Malls uh, was a manager of one of these warehouses. And when he got the word that somebody was diagnosed in his factory, they basically said, don't tell anybody because then people might want to take paid time off because they, they might think that they're sick. And that's really going to drive down our profits. So in order for us to keep making money, in order for us to, we got to keep these people in there. If they get sick, you know, whatever, fuck them, fuck them. We'll just, we'll just say safety standards and fire them. Completely, completely unrelated, right? It's like, oh, the, the strike leader got fired? Why? For the thing that you didn't do. Sounds like a little bit of projection. Basically, I mean, and basically what these guys are saying is uh, do what we tell you or, and shut the fuck up. And if you don't do that, we'll, we'll take your livelihood away. That's how these fucking corporations operate. So these companies are complaining about not being able to talk to the employee directly. That's, that's what like a bunch of these CEOs that are these like pro right to work CEOs, they all talk that way, right? They're just like, but we want to be, we want to talk to these employees. They're our friends. They're our family. They're part of our corporate family. 
And you know what we do with family is we treat them like garbage, right? Like that's kind of the way that they, they do it. But it's like they've never fucking done that. I work for Starbucks uh, for two and a half years. And in that two and a half years, I met Howard Schultz, a record breaking uh, fucking zero times. Never met the guy. Never, And I never heard of him ever talking to anybody. Not once. Not once did I ever hear that Howard Schultz graced his presence inside of a fucking Starbucks to go and hang out with the baristas and listen to our concerns, you know, and listen to, to, to what we're going. Do we have any concerns? With, not fucking once. I bet you Bezos hasn't even fucking seen the inside of one of his warehouses. Why would they do why would they do that? Why would they do that? They don't give a shit. They're completely out of touch. They're they're literally living in their ivory towers. Why the fuck would they do that? If they actually listened to what their employees had to say and if they actually like cared about what their employees had to say, they wouldn't have to go out and join a union and strike because because they would they would know that they're fucking being heard they would know that their voice actually fucking matters in all this stuff right if a company was, was isn't listening if a co- if 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 these employees were just like hey we need in, an increase in um in in our wages we need better working conditions and so on and so forth and i mean that was that was the start of every strike that was the start of every strike in the early 1900s that's how it all started right the if you go back and watch the videos that i made about the 1919 seattle and winnipeg strike the 1934 san francisco strike and what we'll talk about in just a minute um if you look at all those things the beginning of every single strike the beginning of the of, of the unions getting involved is them trying to negotiate with the employer and the employer just giving them the old middle finger and tell them to go fuck themselves. Two to three percent. That's all it takes to start a revolution. Two to three percent of the population being on board with a movement is all it takes to start a revolution. That's it. It's all it takes. Um, that's that's all we need to, to start a revolution. Uh, so, you know, that's why it's important to talk about these ideas. Right. And, and when we talk about jobs, when we talk about people being employed and everybody says, oh, I have a great job. I, I, I like the people I work with. I like my benefits. You know, I, I like um, I like the parking spot that I have. I like, you know, the the Friday lunches that we get. I like casual Fridays. Those are fun. Those are dope. Look, all those things are, are important, but those are not the only things that define a job. Right. I think when it comes to it, what what aren't we here? Are you finding meaning in your job? No one talks about that when you talk about having a good job. Right. Do you find purpose in your job? No one talks about that. We're talking about jeans on a Friday. We're, we're, we're talking about Applebee's gift cards. You know, we're, we're talking about getting health insurance where you still have to make a copay. We're talking about dental those are important. I'm not saying that they're not, but it's just more than just benefits and coworkers and jeans on a Friday. It's about, are you happy at your job? Is your job providing you fulfillment and happiness at your job? And they don't talk about that sort of stuff. That sort of stuff is not addressed. Um, and, you know, eventually we're going to have to negotiate for that. <laughs> That's going to have to be part of our collective bargaining uh, strategy. That's going to be part of the collective bargaining conversation. Uh, is is uh, is uh, is is meaning that meaningfulness of your job, the fulfillment, the happiness that you that you get from job. It shouldn't just be about uh, your pay uh, or uh, or whether you can you 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 know you wear you wear some jeans. You, you you're getting that Applebee's gift card. That's not what it should be about. That's not what it should be about. All right, uh, let, let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, if you guys have not done so, please share this out to, to some folks. Uh, Eric, uh, no, it's 800 times more, 800 times more. Oh, the, it, that's the corporate between, between the CEOs and the, and the lower people. It's 800 times more. Uh, by the way, this is something that happens to me a lot is when you type in Chris, this happens to me when I, t- when I talk in the third person sometimes, uh, because that's, it's not important why, 
uh, it does change my name to to Krishna, which is a god, and I have no interest in being that. By the way, no interest in it. That's too much responsibility. That's a lot of flower. Uh, it's a lot of power. I mean, uh, Krishna had like. A uh, lot of women around him, and you know, I have trouble just uh, uh, dealing with uh, one. Uh, but uh, Eric brings up a good point. It's eight hundred times. I said it's four hundred. It's actually double that, so it's eight hundred times. That's insane, by the way. That's fucking crazy, right? So when people come out and 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 say, "Well, CEOs deserve that money," it's like, do they deserve eight hundred times more? Are they doing eight hundred times more of the work? Like, I doubt it. <laughs> Like, I fucking doubt it. <laughs> John Sheehan, very uh, excellent musician. Uh, John Sheehan, uh, check him out. I think he's doing some live streams as well. Um, my union job told me that they would, wouldn't do anything when the governor asked non-essential businesses to close because uh, compliance was voluntary at that point. Uh, even that change, they still do nothing. I left and filed for unemployment. Yeah, there you go. There you go. They did they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. Uh thank you for leaving that comment, John. Brenda Leeds. Uh the delightful Brenda Leeds. Who wears jeans anymore? Well, I mean in, in the uh in the world we are living in, um I, I haven't worn jeans in three weeks, you guys. I have not worn jeans in three weeks. Oh man. Uh, I'm liking it. I'm, I'm okay with it, but eventually I feel like I'm going to, I, you know, here's the thing is I did find some pairs of jeans that I'm very happy and excited about. Um, and now I, you know, when the fuck am I going to wear them next? I don't know. I don't know. And, and that's part of the thing that's, uh, that's killing me. Oh, Eric, uh, correction. Okay. I looked up the average CEO pay is 271 times, uh, the nearly $58,000 a year medium pay. So 271 times. Okay. So, okay. So that's, that's what it is. That's what it is now. It's 200, which is still like, why? They're still not doing that much more work, right? Like, that's sort of the point that I'm trying to make. <laughs> is what is it like? What does it see? Like, I've asked this question so many fucking times and people just give me like these, these, you know, jargony answers of like, what does a CEO do? And they're like, well, they got the market watches and the bond payments and the security as uh, pe- uh, the um, it you know it's just uh, it, you know it's just fine. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read this last comment from John, and we're gonna move to the next segment. I'm sitting here drawing as I listen to you. I'm actually sketching a Rob Liefeld character as you, as you're aware. Liefeld started his career with Marvel Comics and, and left to found uh, Image Comics because he wanted to control. Uh, he wanted to have control over his own career. Yes, yes, I do know that. Uh, I like I like Rob Liefeld a lot, actually. Um, yes. Uh, so, so there you go. There you go. There's an example of somebody, uh, that wasn't getting, uh, fulfillment, uh, uh, from, from his, uh, his job and, uh, and left his company, uh, to, to do something more, to do something more. Uh, so, uh, yes, you should, uh, you should all, you should all seize your own destiny. Be self-determining. Uh, John's live stream, Monday, 8 p.m. Uh, Monday, 8 p.m. Every Monday, 8 p.m. So tomorrow. Uh, Naomi Klein. Uh, ha- has Naomi Klein's really movie that takes, shows the factory workers taking the factory and doing the management's job, and they're asked the same question, what does management do? Yeah, I think that's that's an important thing, right? But that's also like, that That also goes into transparency. And I think, I, and I think a lot of, um, a lot of the things when you deal with, uh, when you deal with like upper upper management and stuff like that, there is less and less transparency about what they do. <laughs> there is less and less transparency about what they do. Uh, you know, there's a lot of closed door meetings, but that's but that's the other point to it too, right? If if a company is run by a board, why isn't one or two seats of that board uh, members from the working class, members from the the floor? You know, like if you if it, like why isn't isn't a, like at Starbucks, for example, I'm using Starbucks because I'm more familiar with, with that structure is if you're on the board, why isn't there a, 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 somebody that's a manager of a store that's part of that board, somebody that's a shift supervisor that's part, and a barista that's part of that board. 
you know, and if you have board meetings that you're going to change a bunch of shit, you need their input as well. They're the ones that are going to, so to, you know, that, that way there is transparency out there, um, for these people. Like there, there is transparency for, for the worker out there. And then now we get a little bit more understanding of, of what exactly is it that you do? Uh, Lifefield did create cable. Yes. Uh, and who doesn't love cable? Uh, just a red conning machine that cable is. Uh, boy, we could use cable right now, huh? Could, that, that'd be fun. What if cable came back and just retconned this whole situation? Uh, <laughs> that'd be fun. <laughs> Redconned it for the worker. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and um, downloading websites, if that's, that's, if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do, and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.